they ask how you're doing too. And when they, they ask, mean it. they mean it. Okay. Like, you know, you know, some people just say it like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And don't just, even wait for you to give an answer. Just keep it moving. Just keep it, <laughs> just keep it That's moving. That's here in the U.S. Y'all. That's here in the U.S. But yeah. there, when somebody asks you how you're doing, they're actually asking it and they want to hear from you. All right. We're learning today. We're learning today. <laughs> That's the beauty of living abroad, too. Like, and getting closer to your roots. Oh, 100%. What's up, everyone? So, I've been hearing from a lot of folks that are looking to live abroad. They're deciding between Africa and the Caribbean. And so, I brought my boy, Joe. Who's been living in Ghana for two years, y'all? Yes. And we're going to talk about the five things that we loved about living in Ghana and Barbados. And as you guys know or may not know, I was there for four months living and have my own experiences to talk about. So if you haven't already checked out our previous video, make sure you check out that. That'll be in the link below. That's on Joe's channel. And we already covered three things that we love about living there. One was being a majority. Mm -hmm. Two was a slower pace. And it, it, there's the positive side and the mm -hmm side. And the cost of living. So definitely check that out. Comment on his video. Come back to this one, watch this, and let's continue it. So Joe, really quickly, he has a YouTube channel, by the way, guys. Mm -hmm. Tell him about it. All right, so the channel's called Authentic African, and it follows my journey moving from the U.S to Ghana. I'm also building a house in Sierra Leone. So anything you want to know about building in Sierra Leone and or living in Ghana, I got you. Yes. And if this is your first time on my channel, I'm a TV producer sharing my life and all the tips and the hacks that I pick up along the way. So that's tips for my new influencers, travel tips, and everything else from beauty to home design, y'all. You can get it all here. So make sure you check out all my other videos. So let's jump into it, Joe. On your channel, we yes. left off on the fresh food, right? Yes, we did. Fresh food was something that you get living abroad, sir. Oh yeah. So for me, like I did a whole video on how I lost weight and like my waist got to its skinniest while living abroad. And I do honestly believe it's because like a lot of the food is not processed, right? Yeah. It's freshly from like, I don't know if they would call it a farm, but like straight off the ground, yeah, yeah. A farm. And then to the restaurant, farm to table. Pretty much. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. What about Ghana? Yeah, it's exactly the same. And not genetically modified. Mm, you know, yes. most most of it is grown as is in its most natural state. So like, you can buy grapes with seeds in them. Which, I don't know if you know that, but grapes are supposed to have seeds. I didn't know that. <laughs> Watermelons, I heard, don't have seeds lately. They should have seeds, y'all. They should have seeds as well, <laughs> right? So, these aren't genetically modified. They're freshly grown, freshly picked. And because, at least in Ghana, most of the time, they don't keep them refrigerated. It has to be as fresh as possible. Oh. So it really does come directly from wherever they picked it from, which is usually outside of the major cities. And it's right there for you to buy. So my housekeeper, as we mentioned in the last video, Check she does out. my grocery shopping for me. And she has her market that she goes to and buys like my mangoes, my apples, oh, everything, wow. all freshly grown. Yeah, yeah. I don't we call him Prince Joe or Prince Hakeem. That's right. <laughs> Coming to America. What's her name? Her name is Vivian. Is Vivian purchasing them from the grocery stores or purchasing them from local vendors on the street? It's a good question. So most of that comes from local vendors. She doesn't go to the okay. grocery stores. They're more expensive in the grocery stores. Okay. And that's a note in Barbados too. Keep that yeah. in mind. You want it even, even fresher, buy it from the local vendor. On the street. Yeah. And it's, it's fresher and cheaper. You know, the grocery stores have to pay for AC to keep the, the to keep it cool. They have overhead costs. They have employees. The local vendors is going and picking it and selling it right there on the street. So even the wild rice I buy, I don't buy wild rice in a package. The wild rice I buy is like wild. She has to do the little sifter thing, pull out the rocks and whatnot. It's super wild rice. Yeah. Okay. Here's something you're going to gather if you check out the other video, probably later on in this video, like there's my experience, the black experience there, right? <laughs> Living in the Caribbean. And then Joe's takes it to a whole other level, but it makes sense, right? Because we're like, when we think about how we got to America, or at least my experience, right? Came from Africa, then the Caribbean, then U.S. So like yeah. the closer you get to Africa, the more authentic we gonna have with this experience. One hundred. Hence, authentic African. His oh. YouTube channel. There it is. Dang, sifting the rice. I didn't have that. Okay, I'm just gonna say that. Maybe that's an option. Like if you you're from Barbados, comment below if that's something that we can get. And other options for like right. the freshest food in Barbados. Let us know. Yeah, I mean, and I have a housekeeper. She's a local, so she knows where to get all this stuff. Um, I wouldn't that's know. The hack. In fact, I don't know where she goes to get it. That's I have no idea. Hack. So yeah, that's the hack. So was that tip helpful? If it was, click the like button so that I know, y'all. And I know we, we might just do more videos like this. All right, so the next thing that we loved about living abroad in Ghana and Barbados was the environment, mm. sir. It was the nature for me. It was always fresh air, tropical plants like palm trees and all the other things. I don't, I don't know the names of them. Ocean, water. And that for me as a creative, because as I mentioned, I'm a TV producer, was inspiring for me yeah. when it came to creating not only content for YouTube, but 
also content for my job in media as well. Being able to write outside, yeah. even just taking a walk outside after or before a workout was just wonderful. For me, I just feel more calm. Yeah. You know what I'm calm saying? Sure. Like when I see all the buildings, it's just it's it doesn't feel natural to me. You know, it's especially what they symbolize too, right? Yeah. Especially living in New York. Yeah. Constantly hustling, constantly yep. working. I think, you know, in Ghana, you don't have to stop to smell the roses. It's happening all the time. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Hot weather there is not the same as here. Here it's dry and sticky. There it's just, what you think? Well, humid here, right? Humid here. Yeah, it's super humid. So yeah, your sweat doesn't evaporate. So it makes you feel oh, hotter. So it smart. makes you feel hotter, yeah. <laughs> so there's this, because there's water in the air, right? So it makes you feel hotter. Yeah, and for whatever reason in West Africa, at least in Accra and in Freetown, which is in Ghana and in Sierra Leone, they're both coastal cities, right? So in Freetown and Sierra Leone, you have Lonely Beach, and in Ghana, you have Labadi Beach. And in both of those instances, you just have the beach nearby. Within 20 minutes of wherever you are in the capital city, you can get to the beach, you know, It's just those minutes. two beaches? Well, no, so in Sierra Leone, there's technically seven beaches okay. within the country, and in Ghana, there's many more, but in terms of like in the capital city, the, the ease ease of reaching a beach is Labadi Beach in the capital city of Accra in Ghana, and then it's Lumley Beach in the capital city of Freetown in Sierra Leone. So that might be where we differ. We might have a leg up here, y'all, in Barbados. I feel like a lot of people live like five minutes, 10 minutes from the beach, like a walker. No matter where you are in the capital. Most places. Okay. There was If you're near the airport, that was the only place where I was in the beginning. 15 minute drive, but that was the amazing thing, being able to just walk out to the beach. It was mm. real. And the water. Can you talk about the water? Because I never understood as a child, yeah. being American, my mom never wanted to go to the beach. She said the water was dirty. And I was like, what are you talking about? Like, it made no sense to me. Yeah. Then when I first went to the Caribbean, I understand how clear and blue the water is. And then going back to our lakes and our beaches, mm -hmm. yeah, it does look dirty. I have not been back to a U.S. beach since. Like, well, like Jones Beach? Well, in the water, yeah. <laughs> That's in Long Island, y'all. <laughs> yeah, Not like, in the water, I'll chill on the sand. So like, if you live in New York City, you have to go to Long Island to get the closest to a beach that is clean enough yeah, to get in. Yeah, like an hour trip. Yeah, at least, right? And you gotta get on the Long Island Railroad, it's a whole thing. After you're wet, you have to come back on your, it's, that's why I don't even do it, y'all. Yeah. I can't remember the last time I went to a beach here. It's a lot. So yeah, I would definitely say the nature is much closer to you there than it is here. Yeah. It's like when you're in New York City, you have to go to Central Park or like Prospect Park or one you of the major parks. You have to be super parts. intentional about yeah. like getting your nature fix. Yeah, even in LA, you go to Runyon Canyon or whatever, you have to go specifically somewhere. Can okay, we talk about being able to just like pick fruits off trees, like that's oh, yeah. a different experience too. Oh, absolutely, 100%. Yeah. I have a property in Sierra Leone and my caretaker there is growing mangoes, bananas, and apples. Yeah. yeah, all three of those fruits. And I actually, when I'm in Sierra Leone, that's where I get my fruits from. I just go that's to my property and just grab it. That's wrong. Yeah. Yo, are y'all taking notes on this? You need to hurry up and go abroad. If you haven't, you got Ghana, you got Barbados, all right? Comment below actually and let us know which one you're kind of leaning towards. Even if it's gonna be a few years from now, what you leaning towards? Oh yeah. Be curious. I'm interested. And our last one, reasons why we love living in Ghana and Barbados, community focus. Mm -hmm. It's community focus. Like everyone is greeting you when you're walking down the street, not just ignoring you or walking past you. Same experience in Ghana? 100%. They say good morning, yeah. good afternoon, good, good morning, evening. Good afternoon, yep. That's what I was saying. Mm -hmm. Okay. And when they do that, they ask how you're doing too. And when they, they ask, mean it. they mean it. Okay. Like, you know, you know some people <laughs> just say it like, hey, what's up? How you doing? And, and don't just, even wait for you to do the Just keep it moving. Just keep it, <laughs> just keep it That's moving. That's here in the U.S. Bro. That's here in the U.S. But yeah. there, when somebody asks you how you're doing, they're actually asking it and they want to hear from you. Some people do respond with not well and then they'll, then there's like oh, a concern. More. Okay. There's like a concern. Because I think when you, the closer you get to who we are as people, we as people of color, Africans in, in the African diaspora, we were more community focused, right? We cared more about our people. It was, it was family, it was tribe, then eventually became country, right? But the way we look at things is, you know, we're concerned about how everyone's doing, yeah. right? And so everyone's auntie and uncle, you know, I keep finding out that like my parents' cousins 
are not their brothers and sisters. Oh, I've heard people say that. Yeah, yeah like, but that's I, kind of a thing here yeah. a little bit in the U.S., just not as often within the black community. Okay, people yeah. will refer to people as their cousins, but they're not really if they grew up with them. Okay, yeah, that's fair. That's I where it comes from, yeah. y'all. Yeah, if you if, yeah if you grew up as friends, you say your cousins. Yeah, you have a friend that was a cousin, right? Yeah, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Clarice, <and> Clarice. <laughs> Shout out to Clarice. Uh, but I, yeah, I found out later you guys were cousins. But yeah, I mean the same thing. I mean my dad's best friend. I thought that that was his brother. And so that whole time, it wasn't until I went to his funeral that I found out that we were oh, not related. Oh, that, that long? Wow. Yeah, I mean, we were 24 years old when you I found out that okay. I wasn't related to him. So I'm noticing a reoccurring theme, though. The yeah. further you get away from Africa within the diaspora, yeah. we lose some of that. Mm -hmm. So I would say in Barbados, we had some similarities, right? Yeah. People greet each other. But as far as like, if you say not good, it depends on okay. how close you are to the person, okay. whether they'll dive deeper or the nature of the person. But is everyone doing that or majority of people doing that? No. Okay. Okay. And you might come across some people who say, how are you? And not really mean it. Okay. But I think that's the influence of, or, uh, you know, the further we get once again, away from yeah, the Western it. culture, the yes, Western influence. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. I get that. Yeah. I mean, Ghanaians are very, they're very polite too, right? I mean, it's like, it's yes, please. That family element, you know, saying yes, please, no, please. We say yes, please in Barbados. We say. Barbados says yes, please too. Comment okay. below if you're Bayesian. Okay. Yes, okay. what in the world? And it's something that like, did you, okay. Did you, no, let's talk about it. Okay. Did you, were you confused when you heard people saying yes, please? I think they need context. Sure. It's not, do you want some water? Yes, please. Yeah. It's, well, if, if you asked me if I wanted some water and I said no, I would say no, please. Oh, as well? Yeah. I wasn't hearing no please in Barbados. Okay. So and now I, we know where it comes from, y'all. Yeah, so. The context. Yeah, and if you ask me my name, I I just say Joe. But some people would say Joe, please. Oh, that's, wow. That's, I mean, even it's written. So like, even if you're like right. dating or friends with someone, they'll say the statement and then with a please after. Okay. Yeah. Or like for in Barbados, if I say, can I have some water? They say, yes, please. Okay. And so it's kind of, I think for folks like from US, et cetera, or Western, we're kind of like, wait, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. Why why the please being added to it? And that's just because that's not part of our culture, yeah. but it is part of their culture, Barbados. And then as we're seeing, it's something in Africa as well. Yeah. Yeah, some Beijing might have found out something new today, y'all. Yeah. Comment below if that was the case. Yeah, and I would say Ghana is very specific with all the extra pleases. I think a yes please is pretty common, I think around other places I've been in West Africa, yeah. but the please for everything else, like the no please or your name and then the please after, wow. or someone's even, I asked you know someone how they're doing and they said, I'm not okay, please. Okay. So it's, I mean, please is used all the time. And what That's I understand good. in uh, Treat, the main language spoken in Ghana, they use please in the local language when they're speaking about things. And so I think that's why I translated to English in the same way. Let me tell you why this is so interesting. Mm -hmm. When I asked some folks, Bayesian, why they think that is, they said they think it was, not everyone, so please don't come after me, <laughs> but they thought it was stemming from slavery times mm -hmm. and kind of like, yes, a master kind of thing, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And wanting to please, yeah. So that's interesting. That's actually quite refreshing. Yeah. I know that that is most likely where it came from. Yeah, hopefully it didn't come from. I, the beginning of the slave trade in Africa. So if y'all feeling these tips thus far, you must subscribe. As I mentioned, this is my thing, travel hacks, lifestyle tips, tips for newbie influencers. Go ahead and subscribe and click that notification bell if you want to be the first to know whenever those videos come out. All right, we're learning today. We're learning today. That's the beauty. That's the beauty of living abroad too, like and getting closer to your roots. Oh, 100%. Yeah. It makes me more of a caring person. I remember going to a restaurant here in New York and I noticed how different I approach things. Like I walked into a restaurant, I said good afternoon to the people that were in there. I said hello How to was the that bartender. Curious, oh, they well, it was a vegan restaurant, so they're already very like, friendly <laughs> anyway. So they were like, oh yeah, how you doing? We had a whole conversation. The guy was like, man, you look hot. Do you want some water? Went and got me some water. And people just respond to you differently when you walk in. And cause I was waiting for my food, I had ordered it and I was just gonna take it to go. And he was like, man, I know it's hot out there. Let me bring you some water. And it's because I walked in and said, you know, good afternoon. How are you guys doing? And I actually asked to, I mean, I waited to hear the response, right? Okay. It wasn't just like, part. what's up? How you doing? You okay. know what I'm saying? It was like, how are you doing? And like, I actually listened. And then I left there thinking, I'm definitely a nicer person after living in Ghana than I have been <laughs> well, we before gotta, going. We got to remember again, there's the U.S. Mm -hmm. and then there's New York. <laughs> That's true too. That's true too. Because people say New Yorkers are rude and mm -hmm. like, I think the thing about it is New Yorkers are just so focused on, we're hustle, 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 hustle. Mm -hmm. Going, 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 going. Unfortunately, I guess focused on ourselves. Yeah. And always in a rush, right? 
and that in the rush, but that takes us back to the community focused mention that we said. But yeah. I will say I have a different story with regards to I came back and kind of started saying good afternoon to people. Okay. I did it on the street. One person said good afternoon. One person ignored me. <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I'm back in the US. So maybe I just go back to what I'm doing. But I'm, I'm actually going to try it again. Yeah. Because I remember some folks visited from Atlanta and when they entered the elevator, they said good afternoon. So I kind of felt like I had to. Yeah. And we it, it started a conversation. Like yeah. it just feels better to be nicer. And like you never know who needed to hear something as little as a good afternoon or hi. Absolutely. Yeah. I will say people from the South do greet each other. South and the Midwest, they do greet each other. And they, they do that when they walk into a room or when they see someone. New Yorkers don't really do that, right? No. Like you may not, you may walk into a room. I've many times gotten into an elevator and not said anything. Nothing, to people like in the, the movies. They yeah. don't say nothing. Just get in, press your button, turn around and face forward. And keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Are you noticing the theme though? The closer we get north, the further we get from <laughs> our practices. Mm, true. Interesting. Once again, y'all, if you have not checked out Joe's video, we cover a bunch of things over there. Like I said, we talk about being a majority. That was great. And like, I'm not even gonna go into detail. If you wanna check that out, you gotta go to his channel. The link is below. But thank you so much for tuning into this. If you are thinking about living abroad, y'all, let us know. Let us know what questions you have. Hit myself up. Hit me up about Barbados. Hit up Joe about yes. Africa, because he's been to a couple of different countries there. So if you like this video, y'all, go ahead and check out Joe's video right here, all right? Ton more tips for y'all.